All right, good afternoon. We'll call to order the City of Murfreesboro Board of Zoning Appeals uh, regular meeting for March 22nd, 2017. Uh, the first item on our agenda is a consideration of the minutes from our meeting on February 22nd. Uh, those minutes have been provided to the board members. Are there any changes needed for those? No changes. All right, if no changes, those will stand as approved and we'll move on to new business. Uh, the first item is a variance request. It's application Z17012 by Crowell Home Building requesting a seven foot variance from the zoning ordinance requiring a minimum of 40 feet <coughs> front building setback for principal structures to allow 33 feet and requesting a five foot variance uh, from, the, from the ordinance requiring a minimum of 30 feet rear building setback uh, for principal structures to allow 25 feet. Uh, this is for property in an RS-15 zone located at 5122 General Eisenhower Drive. And we have someone new working with us today. We'd like to welcome Ms. Marina Rush. If you would go over that for us. Thank you so much, Chair Young. Um, yes, thank you. I am new to the City of Murfreesboro Planning Department as a principal planner, and I'm honored and thrilled to be part of this community. So thank you again for welcoming me so well. Um, the applicant, Crowell Home Building, is the current uh, property owner, and they are requesting two variances from the City of Murfreesboro Zoning Ordinance Chart 2 from the setback. Seven feet um, variance from the front setback requirement of 40 feet to allow 33 feet for the structure placement. And secondly, five feet from the rear yard setback requirement of 25 feet to allow 20 feet for the structure placement. As noted, the property is zoned RS-15, which is single family residential, 15,000 square foot lot minimum. And the lot size is approximately 15,073 square feet in size. And it is located in the Liberty Valley subdivision, lot 206 at 5122 General Eisenhower Drive. The property um, contains three easements, which is the primary reason for this variance request. Um, it has a 10 foot utility easement that runs along the street frontage. It has a 30 foot sewer easement that runs along the north side and a 10 foot drainage easement that runs along the south side. In addition, as you can see on the, um, the aerial view, the property is a pie shape, which is due to the street elbow where it intersects um, Bastonia Way, and which is very similar to a bulb of a cul-de-sac. Um, this, both the easements and the shape of the property limits the buildable area of the property. And just as background, in uh, November of 2014, the previous owner had applied for a variance as well uh, for setbacks. Um, it was a much larger variance that was requested. They were asking 10 feet from the front and 17 feet for the rear. <coughs> At that time, the Board of Zoning Appeals had um, voted two to two and as such, the request would, uh, was not approved and did not move forward. Um, the current owner is also struggling with trying to uh, come up with a developable area for a house that's similar in nature to the neighborhood and um, has requested a much smaller variance in size and uh, that's what's before you today. At this point, uh, I believe the owner is in the uh, audience if there's any questions and um, I'm welcome to any questions as well from the board. Uh, this concludes my presentation, thank you. Thank you. Any questions for staff at this point? No. Um, anything the applicant would like to add? Uh, I guess just the fact that the lot is shaped, as she explained, just makes it hard. It's only got 27 feet of building envelope in there. Outside of building a silo, I don't know what I can put on there to get the square footage. Also, that lot is 15,000 feet, but and it has bigger setbacks than the other lots in the neighborhood but it's such an odd shape that that really, you know, prohibits you to get anything in there. So if I can get this, it is the last lot in this section also, um, and I'm just trying to get this where I can put a house on it and finish the neighborhood. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. same house that I have two doors down. I'm gonna put the exact same house. Okay. I'm sorry, can I, I didn't catch your name. We'll get My that name in the Jeff room. Kroll. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kroll. Anything else for Mr. Kroll? Uh, no, I, and I just, I guess this may be a question for staff. Uh, maybe they know the answer, but interesting that the other sections, RS-10 and this is RS-15, like you, as you said, it increased. Uh, is that just 
I guess pertain to six and three that's uh, or or do you even know? Yeah, it's just that area I've been building in that subdivision since the day it opened. Actually, the lot to the left of it <clears throat> has a 35 foot front setback and a 20 foot rear setback, but my lot has 25 and 40. So it's just that if it didn't have that little bubble as she called it in the front, there'd yeah. be no questions to this, you know what I mean? But with those drainage easements and the sewer easement running through it, it's, it's a challenge. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I don't have any other questions. Thank you, sir. At this time, we'll conduct a public hearing. Uh, anyone wishing to speak for or against the application, if you'd come up, state your name and address, and you can provide us with any comments you might have. Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further discussion or a motion. Uh, I believe we have two components to this application, seven foot for the front and then the second one of five foot for the rear. Would this require two separate motions? Yes, preferable, much preferable. Mr. And Chairman, tips, uh, sir. My recollection is that uh, George Washington Boulevard is pro probably the major entrance way into that subdivision. And so the developer put the lots on that street as RS-15. And then in the, I'd say the secondary lots back off of the main entrance, uh, they did RS-10. So that was zoned that way uh, when the development came in. But if, if, if this were in the 10, they wouldn't even be needing a variance of any kind, would they? Um, I don't know if, uh, so no, you'd be able to I make it fit. The setbacks would still be the same, even if it was the a 10. Setbacks would be the same? I don't think so. I have those. So in the RS-10, the setback is different in the front. Instead of 40, it would be 35 feet. And it's also different for the side and rear. So the side would be 10 feet and the rear 25. Yeah, so correct. If, okay, if so they would still be would two, basically, okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move for approval of the uh, variance for the front setback as requested by the applicant subject to any other directions of the staff. I'll second. I have a motion and a second for the seven <coughs> foot front setback. Are there any further discussion? I just wanna uh, say that I appreciate um, you trying to find something that's a smaller footprint than what was before us prior. Um, I was concerned in the previous application, I know you weren't the applicant, but um, with it having uh, been presented this way, it, it is a little, it, it is better, and I appreciate you doing that work to do that. All right, motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that, that portion is passed. Uh, next, we'll move to the five foot rear setback. Uh, likewise, Mr. Chairman, I would move to approve the five foot variance uh, from the required 30 foot uh, rear setback uh, subject to any staff directions. I second. <coughs> I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on, on that? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that application has been approved. Uh, next, we'll move to special use permits. Uh, application Z17013 by Fred Halfpap representing First United Methodist Church. Uh, they're requesting a special use permit for the following. Uh, one is for a construction of a columbarium to house 250 niches for cremated remains within a brick enclosed structure. And the second is for a construction of a soccer field. Uh, this property is located in residential single family RS15 zoning district at 265 West Thompson Lane. Um, have some unusual circumstances within this in that myself and Julie both attend the church there. So with a member we have missing today, we don't have quite a quorum to be able to, to proceed, but we'll, with the application being uh, advertised, we'll go ahead and get it presented and have a, conduct a public hearing. And then we'll 
take up action when, we, when everybody's in place. That works. So, Ms. Rush, if I fill in any blanks that I missed there. Thank you, Chair Young. Um, no, that's accurate. We do not have a quorum today for the votes for this item, so we will have to um, uh, open up the public hearing because it's been advertised, and then uh, we'll close the hearing, and then we'll place this item on the agenda for April for a decision to be made, um, as two members do have to recuse themselves. I will, for the benefit of the public, give a brief uh, presentation on the item, and I can do that as well next month. Um, so the applicant is the First United Methodist Church, and they are requesting a special use permit for two items. Uh, one is for the construction of a columbarium that would house 250 niches for, uh, that would hold the deceased cremated remains. And the second is the construction of an athletic field um, to be used for soccer and an occasional kickball game. The property is located at 265 West Thompson Lane and is zoned RS-15. Uh, the columbarium would be a brick enclosure measuring seven feet tall by 26 feet in length by three feet width. It would be located outside the entrance facing Thompson Lane and it's also proposed to have a garden area with sitting benches there and it was also designed to accommodate additional uh, walls that would ho house niches in the future as the need arises. The athletic field is going to be located to the west of the church building in the existing grass area and it will accommodate soccer games as well as other games. Um, the soccer goals would be movable. There was no lighting proposed as part of it. Um, and the parking lot that is existing can accommodate the parking needs for this particular use. Um, staff believes that uh, for the RS-15 district that both of these uses are a uh, special use permit that's allowed upon approval. Um, and at this point, I would suggest that the board uh, can open up the public hearing, then uh, close the hearing, and continue this item for decision. Um, and I'll defer to David. I believe the board members that recuse themselves may be able to vote on the uh, deterrence. Yes. Deterrence. Thank you. Okay. At this time, we'll conduct a public hearing. Is there anyone present that would like to speak to this application? Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for a motion to defer. I move to defer this uh, request to the April 2017 meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <laughs> if not, all in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed. So appreciate your time, and we'll try to get that taken care of next, next go around. Um, our next application is Z17014 by John Frost requesting a special use permit to establish a 200 square foot accessory apartment um, within an existing detached garage. And this is for property in an RS-15 zone located at 207 Grisham Lane. Ms. Rush, if you'd go over that for us. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, the applicant, Mr. Frost, is requesting a special use permit to establish an accessory apartment. The property is zoned RS-15 single-family residential, 15,000 square feet, and it's located at 207 Gresham Lane. The zoning code sets forth standards for accessory apartments, uh, which include that only one may be allowed on a residential zoned lot, that it may only be used by members of the family or an invited guest and may not be used as a rental. It cannot be larger than 700 square feet in size. It must comply with all the standards in the health, building, and other codes and conditions may be placed on the special use permit to assure compatibility with the adjoining properties and maintaining the integrity of the single family residential district it's located in. In this particular project, the accessory apartment would be approximately 200 square feet in size. Um, it was originally constructed as a single car garage that was converted to a beauty salon following approval of a special use permit in 2001. Um, so it was established as a beauty salon with a chair, um, a bathroom with a shower was installed, as well as counter uh, with a full sink um, and cabinetry. The salon chair has since been removed. Uh, the owner states that the unit is currently used by his son and will continue to be used by him. And there is a mini refrigerator, a microwave, and a hot plate, but there's no cooking stove. Uh, the son currently eats with his family in the main dwelling. and. Uh, the zoning code defines an accessory apartment as independent living facility with a provision uh, for food preparation, sanitation, and sleeping. 
Because this is an existing structure with no new construction proposed, the owner will need to have the building department to complete an inspection to ensure that the standards are met for this use. Um, and that would need to occur prior to occupancy. Um, the owner shall contact the City of Murfreesboro Building Department to schedule that inspection. Um, also, as a condition of approval, staff is recommending that the owner has to complete the restriction on the use of land document, which limits the use of uh, the apartment to just family members for the current owner, and it rides with the deed of the land. So if it's sold, uh, subsequent owners would also have that requirement placed on them. Uh, the applicant is in attendance here today, so if the board has any questions of staff or of the applicant as to what the intention is, um, we're welcome to have that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions for staff? Uh, with it, with there just being a hot plate and a dishwasher, I didn't, I didn't realize that that would require uh, such an application. That I thought you had to have a heating element, like a permanent heating element, in order to. Uh, that that no. Asking for clarification as to the. You're correct. Uh, typically, um, if somebody's asking for an accessory apartment. They are putting in the cooking facilities, um, and the full bath, which then um, gives it you know that type of a use. Um, whereas just having a sleeping area for somebody uh, does not necessarily constitute as a full accessory apartment. Um, so the challenge then becomes how does the building code address it? So we've invited the building official, he's here, um, and I probably would defer to him and how the codes define that separately. From the zoning code and from the planning perspective, it is in the definition that it should have cooking facilities. So um, I could defer to Robert. Is this necessary because it's basically a conversion from a salon commercial use to, to this proposed use? as well? Um, well, actually, we've discussed it amongst our staff, and uh, the special use permit was not necessary because it doesn't have the cooking facilities, but the owner has proposed um, this process, and it was advertised as such. So uh, we did want to bring it forward because of that advertising, um, but I think the owner can respond to what their intention is, um, as well as the building official. Yeah, I would like to hear from what the, uh, the owner has to say, to see what he's actually uh, requesting rather than just uh, assuming that it's going to be uh, an apartment when actually it, it may not be an apartment. Uh, uh, no, it's just an additional living area uh, for my son. Um, he's 21 and I, it works better if he's out there. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I have a, uh, uh, it's, it has a nice bathroom, shower, uh, sink. And, uh, commode and all and then it also has a kitchenette area um, it has a we have a hot plate we have a, a microwave we have a toaster and we have a one burner uh, that uh, little apartment type style but that's all I have uh, in that particular area and a sleeping area and it was pretty easily converted because we had it zoned for the uh, business small home business back in 2001, I believe it was. So, did, so is, the, is the hot plate like a removable hot plate or is, mm -hmm. it, a, is it installed into the cabinetry no, or is it just removable. like a, a countertop? Countertop, right. And we do have um, photos that was supplied by the applicant <coughs> that were part of the packet and um, they are on the screen if uh, you'd like to review those. Any further questions for Mr. Frost? And even though it's not, they don't have to have it, even though the application, even if the zoning requirements wouldn't require it to be an accessory apartment, we can still allow it to be? Well, that's a good question. Um, they're going to have to comply with the standards uh, for the building code. So my understanding um, from the building official, if he could respond to it, um, there would be things that would have to be done to the unit if it was to be an accessory apartment and if it was not an accessory apartment and just a sleeping area, then different things would have to be um, addressed. So maybe I uh, could defer to him. Looks like we're going to drag you in <laughs> one way or the other, Mr. Holmes. 
I'm sorry for my confusion. I just oh, the, uh, there's no confusion uh, from a building code perspective. Uh, we would have to look at this unit either as a sleeping unit or dwelling unit, the difference being the kitchen. Um, in my opinion, from what I heard and seen so far, it appears to be a sleeping unit because it does not have permanent cooking facilities. Hot plate is not permanent. Microwave probably is not. Um, some of the things that we would be looking for in a sleeping unit is bathing facilities. He said he had a shower, so that's taken care of smoke detectors, which is life safety. In addition to that, an egress window of a certain size within so many inches of the floor. Um, it also technically is a change of use from a hair salon, I guess, if you will, to a sleeping unit. So those are the things we would be looking for. Does that answer your question? Or I, I couldn't really hear initially what your question was. So. I, I didn't. Um... If they're temporary cooking facilities, does that make it a, a living unit? If if the hot plate can be removed, is that where you kind of where you're going? Yeah, well, because it's I, what the question that's before us is to approve this for an accessory structure, correct? It correct. It, it already is an accessory structure. Accessory apartment. Accessory apartment. Accessory apartment. It, you used as a as a, a beauty salon, I think. And before that, it was a garage. Right. Okay. So now they're changing the use. They changed the use from garage to beauty salon that required permits and now they're going from a salon to a sleeping unit it appears so all those are changes of use to the so existing accessory structure i'm sorry either way accessory apartment whether it's a sleeping unit or a dwelling unit it's still the request is to approve an accessory apartment and then and that's it whether it's that, I, that's correct. I, as I understand it, I think this one may be borderline, and it may be that it would not have been absolutely essential for this to be uh, given a special use permit as an accessory apartment, but it was a change in use from uh, a special use permit that was granted. And I, I don't think we would be out of line uh, to go ahead and approve this as an accessory apartment, although it Frankly, it may be questionable whether that would be absolutely be necessary. Okay. That, that was what I was asking. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I'm proud to add to, con to the confusion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. At this time, we'll conduct a public hearing. Is there anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application? If you'd come forward, please. Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further discussion or a motion. I, I guess a question for our attorney and, and our planners: If we approve making, a, 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 if we approve this permit for accessory apartment, subject to a building inspection, if that building inspection comes back satisfactory, no further action being needed before the board. That's correct. If it comes back unsatisfactory for whatever reason, then uh, Mr. Frost may need to come back before the BZA? If it does not pass a codes inspection, uh, then uh, he would have to decide if he wants to uh, make make whatever uh, changes, improvements, what he would have to do to, to satisfy the codes inspection. But as long as it continues either way to be an accessory, uh, an accessory apartment, I don't believe there'd be any need for him to come back here. Second question, that, and this is just, I think, uh, with with the document, the restriction on the use of land, that document that's attached identifies a different party. It right. This was the address. So it put like in, I believe, just as a form. And we will. Uh, that, okay. We'll make sure we get the correct document right. to him immediately. I don't have any other questions. No further questions. I'll make a motion to approve the application. I'll second. Subject to. To the staff comments, so I guess mm -hmm. with the restriction, okay. Yeah. And that would include a subject to conditions. Inspection. Yeah, that's the conditions set by the staff. Okay. Second. All right, we have motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> there are none. That application has been approved. Uh, next, we'll move to application Z17015 by Joseph Love on behalf of Andrew Wyatt 
and Dia Cirillo requesting a special, special use permit to establish a 530 square feet accessory apartment. Uh, this is within an existing single family detached dwelling uh, for property in an RS-15 zone located at 411 Apollo Drive. Uh, Mr. Rush, if you'd review that for us. Thank you, Chair. Um, the applicant is Mr. Love on behalf of Andrew Wyatt and Dia Cirillo and is requesting a special use permit for an accessory apartment on a property that's zoned RS-15 located at 411 Apollo Drive. Again, the zoning sets forth standards for accessory apartments that one may only be allowed on a residential zoned lot. Then it may only be used by members of the family or an invited guest. It may not be used for a rental, cannot be larger than 700 square feet, and must comply with all the standards in the health, building, and other codes. And conditions may be placed on the special use permit to assure compatibility with the adjoining properties and maintain the integrity of the single family residential district. In this case, the accessory apartment is approximately 530 square feet, and they are converting an area that's in the existing house that's a master bedroom suite to um, this apartment. And it will include food preparation area, as well as a sleeping area, a bathroom with a shower, a laundry area, and a closet. The applicant indicates that this unit will be used by um, both of their parents when they come to visit for extended stays and that um, they intend to convert the unit back to a bedroom at some point in the future when the need no longer exists. Uh, staff recommends the condition, as is stated in the staff report, be added that the owner shall complete the restriction on the use of land document, which limits the use of the apartment to family members for the current owner, and if sold in the future, will stay as a requirement on the deed. Um, the city attorney does prepare these documents, not the owner, so just to provide clarification on that as well. And it will have all the correct data. So I do apologize for any mistakes in the past. Um, that concludes my presentation. And I believe the applicant is here to answer any questions the board may have. Thank you. Any questions for staff on this one? Uh, and if not, uh, anything the applicant would like to add? All right, see, now we'll move to the public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application? Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussion or a motion. Uh, there's no requirement for this to be inspected at post construction is there I mean it, it's all self-contained in the current dwelling uh, this one is going to uh, get building permits because they are installing the kitchen unit which right. will require a building permit so it will be subject to those inspections by the city okay uh, mr. chairman I'd like to make a motion that we approve uh, this request uh, with the condition of completion of the restriction of use uh, of land document subject to staff direction and inspection I have a motion in a second any further discussion if not all in favor say aye aye, aye. and any opposed that application has been approved uh, next item is staff reports and any other business uh, no sir we do not I have nothing all right well thanks everyone and we will adjourn